All right, Daniel. You're still playing around with these golf ball decimal meters. I am. <laughs> so we did a luminous before. Well, this is my color meter. And we're going we're to talk a little bit about color temperature. Okay. All right. Um, I guess first let's talk about how we measure it. Color temperature is measured in degrees Kelvin. So you've probably, you know, 10 years ago when you'd walk down the, the bulb aisle at Home Depot, it was all incandescent lamps, so they didn't really get into this. Yeah. But I bet you've seen this as you're buying lights for your house. Oh, yeah. You can now look at them and there's a little measurement on the side that says, oh, this is daylight, so it's 5600K. Uh -huh. So the general understanding of color temperature is definitely a lot better than it was a decade ago. But color temperature generally, you know, for our purposes, ranges from around 2800 degrees Kelvin up to 5600 degrees Kelvin. I mean, it still exists outside of that. We just don't tend to use that very much. So, I'm sure the question is, where do we need to fall and why? No, it's uh, where do we need to fall and why? Oh, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Um, thanks for thanks for the clarification. <laughs> yeah. So I guess let's let's talk through first, seeing a couple different. Uh, um, I got to got to do the over the top. Cool kid. Um, the cool kid. Let's uh, let's actually look at a couple different color temperature differences, so you guys can see you know what that is. First off, can we kill all the blue lighting in the room? The reason we're doing that is any other lighting has the potential to get into my sensor here, and because we're talking about color temperature, just a room full of blue light is gonna make it feel like the color temperature and, and read as if the color temperature is higher. Can we actually see the difference that that makes? Absolutely. Because I think that's a that's a, yeah. an issue that not a lot of people might pay attention to. Let's bring to. all the blue back up. So I'm gonna do a quick measurement. Notice there's no blue lights directly on me. Right. Everything that we have is, is both reflection off of surfaces and reflection off haze. So that's not something people take into account a lot. They're like, oh, well, there's not a blue light hitting me. There is haze in the room. Haze, what haze is, is reflection off of particles. Yeah. That's how we get what we is. So right. ultimately, some of that is going to hit on me. I'm going to do a quick reading here. So that's actually getting at about 5,600K, which is not as far off as I thought it was going to be. So I bet right now we don't have a lot of haze in the room and some of it's out to the side. But let's go ahead and kill all the blue now. We'll see what that difference is. So we're now at 5,300 degrees Kelvin. Not a massive difference, still a difference, and we didn't change any key lighting in the room. You know, the Kino flows we have just for the video are still on me. Conventional lights in front of me are all still on. But all of the architectural, architectural, like decorative lighting was enough to shift my color temperature 300 degrees. So if you're, maybe I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but what I just learned was if your video is off from one week to the other, but the lighting guy's saying, well, I didn't change anything, but there was way more haze one week to the other, that could change things on video drastically. Let's take that a step further. What if your background on your LED wall behind your pastor was one color one week and another color the next week and you had a lot of haze in the room. That's gonna affect the color temperature the camera's seeing on skin tone because you're ultimately getting some reflection. Now, how much that affects it and whether or not it affects it enough to matter, changes. Okay, yep. but it might all might not always be about the lighting fixtures. There might be other factors at play that we need to pay attention Absolutely. to. Absolutely, lighting is lighting. It doesn't matter if it's coming out of an LED wall or an LED ellipsoidal, it's still lighting. Okay. So, all right, so we've established kind of what color temperature is, how we measure it. So let's talk about what our target should be. You know, when I was coming up through the business, we didn't really talk about this as much. It was just whatever the color temperature of the light was natively, which was usually around 3000 degrees Kelvin, was kind of how, how we lit people. The reason was all of the other lighting, you know, background scenic lighting, you know, all that was that same color temperature as well. Um, we had no LED walls to work with. So just normal tungsten halogen lighting was the baseline. And I'll emphasize that word baseline, you know, so, when we are lighting for video, we have to white balance the camera so that the cameras know what white is. Like we have to tell them, yep. this is white, and then everything else is based off that. Yep. What our color temperature is affects what that color of white is. So a lot of what happens in the background now behind our speakers has started changing. We have moving lights with arc bulbs in them who have a, a native color temperature of 6,000 6, degrees Kelvin. We have LED walls, you know, with a color temperature of 5,500 to 6,000 degrees Kelvin. We have little LED movers, same thing. It's all in this higher color, color, higher color temperature. So you're seeing a theme here. Yep. Everything going on in the background is a higher color temperature. If we are telling our cameras what white is, and I'm telling them that white is 3,000 degrees Kelvin on my face, and everything behind me is not, it's a different color temperature natively, then in the room, it's probably still gonna look just fine. As soon as you look at it on video, a blue moving light behind me in the room, or better comparison, a lavender LED uh, or moving light behind me in the room is gonna look like blue on video. That's why you know, that happens. An amber one's gonna look a little yellow, like, you know, because the cameras are referencing that off of what we told them white is, and what is white for a low color temperature key light, and what is white for a 
higher col color temperature moving light in the background, even if we have color mixed into it, is going to be different. So it's a different baseline. Exactly. So now that's why most um, when we're you know you hear things about you know put CTB color uh, color temperature blue gel in your front lights, or you hear do you want daylight LED leakos for your front light or warm white? Um, all of us are starting to shift and starting to have for many years now shifted towards that higher co higher color higher color temperature. So this could be a challenge where some people on your team want that really cinematic, warm, amber look. But when you do that, you actually have to think about haze and what are the colors of the other lights and like everything else is in play with that too. Absolutely. And then you even have to weigh out what is the goal here, making it look as best as possible in video or making it look as best as possible live. Sometimes you can do those two things together, but there's other factors that will affect this. You know, we don't feel blue to each other in the room right now because all of the lighting we have in this room is that similar range of color temperature. Maybe your house lights in your church were put in 10 or 15 years ago and they're conventional bulbs burning at 2800 to 3200 degrees Kelvin. Now, if I start lighting your speaker at 5600 degrees Kelvin, he's going to look blue because our eyes reference off of it. So there's lots of, of factors at play there. If you have windows in your sanctuary and you have actual daylight coming in, it's going to be better to go ahead and light key light at daylight. If you don't, eh, maybe not. So there's definitely factors in here. But it's funny though because I'm I'm not a lighting operator. Not yet. Right. <laughs> We're getting becoming there. one. But I'm not a lighting designer, so I I don't know a lot about this stuff. I remember the first time we changed a light bulb at our house to an LED bulb. Mm -hmm. Had no idea what the color temperature difference was going to be. I remember we I screwed in the light bulb in this lamp in our living room and my wife went bananas because <laughs> it was like why does that light look so terrible? Yeah. Well, it's because it was so different from everything else and so different than anything we'd ever experienced. It's like, I hate these LED bulbs. <laughs> it's like right. you thought your walls were white, but they're actually a little tan. Exactly. My biggest pet peeve is going into a hotel room and seeing both a high color temp and a low color temp bulb and lights on the different tables inside of the bed. But that's a, that's a different video for another time. Um, so yeah, I guess let's walk through um, so you yeah. kind of see some of these changes on camera real quick. So right now, again, just for reference, I'm going to measure where I'm at. Right here, we're sitting at 5,300 degrees Kelvin. So let's kill the front wash. We're gonna bring a moving light up on me. And right now there is no color, no color correction in this at all. This is a, an arc moving light, it's not even LED. Um, for anybody watching that knows, this is actually a Viper Wash DX, completely open. So I probably look very blue right now. I'm gonna measure. Yeah, so this bumped me up to almost 6,800 degrees Kelvin. Okay. Very white, very blue. Let's uh, try giving me 20% of the color temperature channel. So this, as we talked about in the moving light video, is just a channel in the moving light that is made to adjust the color temperature. I don't know if you guys saw that change at all. It was pretty slight, but I could kind of sense it on me. Now I'm gonna measure. I'm only at 64, is that full 20%? See, even pros. You, Double check some stuff sometimes. But or, you felt a 200 degree change. I felt a 200 degree change because I'm tuned into doing that. Now we, we <laughs> tested not. this before we shot this video. And here's an interesting thing. I and mean, this is kind of a real wor world issue. I think when we tested it, we still had a lot of the other lighting on in the room, like the blue lighting and all that. So we're probably seeing less of a shift because of that. Go ahead and give me another 20% on the color temperature channel. Did you guys see that one? I that saw changed. that one. Okay, yeah. a little bit more substantial. That's putting me at uh, not quite 5,000 degrees Kelvin, a little lower than I want it. Back it off, subtract 10. Okay. 5,600 on the dot. Go ahead and bring the conventionals back on too. So before, if you remember, we had those in that same general range. Now I can check all that, you know, even outside of where the moving light is, and we're balanced. And you guys can, you can't really tell as much of a difference between the two types of light as, right. we, as we could before. Now, did you notice when the conventionals first came on, they were a little oranger yes. at first? You guys ever had like a, a light on a dimmer in your house and if it's real low, it feels very orange and ambery? Yep. That's because as you are, are dimming a bulb, the color temperature is gonna shift naturally. It's not this way with modern LED. You know, you can be at 10% and 100% and you're gonna have the same color temperature. Okay. But in a filament, in a bulb, as you're putting less voltage through that, you know, it's gonna have a more amber hue to it. So you have to keep that in mind as you're setting color temperature if you're still using conventional lighting for front lighting. So right now, uh, we had them bring this completely up to full. I'm at 5,400 degrees Kelvin. Let's bring this to about 50%. 5,400 
And it's just the conventionals that just are changing. Just the conventionals is all, all that's changing. I now take another reading. I'm at 4,300K now. Wow. Yeah. You know, we, yes, it dimmed, but it also shifted color. So keep that in mind if you are setting color temperature in conventionals. Just because you have it right, if you have to change your intensity, it's going to shift again. So you want to make sure you figure out your illuminance first and then get your color temperature right behind that. And the two kind of go hand in hand and will affect each other. So it's like if you change one thing, change everything. Right. Or just buy LED fixtures and not worry about it. <laughs>